Welcome CSE 121 to exercise 13. This is Polygons Everywhere for fall 2020, and it's a little bit of an updated version from the past. Every time we do these, we do things a little bit different. And I'll show you the sample right here, and wait do you see how fun this is. When you hit the Run button, you don't just have one polygon, you have polygons all over. They're random polygons. They have a random number of sides, they're a random number of sizes, meaning the length of each side of them, and they're a random position, and they're also a random color. So there's four different things that are random about them, and it just makes a lot of fun. Look at that. You just hit the run button, and, and it's crazy. It's like it's like 4th of July, just fireworks of polygons all over. So it's a lot of fun, and we're going to work with basically one function, and we're going to just generate some random numbers to put in there, random choice, random numbers, random colors, all kinds of things, even random positions, and then we're just going to loop our function call. Instead of running a bunch of function calls, we're just going to loop one function call and have it change every time. That means we're going to define a lot of our variables inside the function, so each time it runs the function, it generates a new color, it generates a new position, it generates a new size. You don't want to put all that stuff outside here because then it would do it once and you'd just be repeating the same thing. So the only thing we're going to do outside of our function is basically create a color list of whatever bunch of colors you want. You could do as many as you want, and they're going to be strings, and then we're just going to define our turtle outside the list. Although I think we could do it inside the list. We'll have to try it both ways. I know in the past I had two different functions, but for this one we only have one function and then a function call in a loop, so we may be able to define the turtle inside there. We'll try that and see what happens. And we'll kind of go from there. So we'll have some fun with this. Another little exercise of just kind of exercising our brains with these turtle polygons and modules. We'll do a couple more exercises with the polygons, so we're doing loops inside of loops, and also using more of the arguments and parameters, which this one doesn't really have arguments that we're sending along, but we'll get back to this. But this one, since we are creating polygons in our first exercise, this will kind of continue that, but make it a little more fun. So let's get started with the fun. I'm going to go into my repels, and I'll go into my CSC 121 folder, and I'll make a new repel, and I'll make sure it's Python with turtle, and I'll call this 13, and I'll just put dash polygons everywhere. And you could put your last name initial if you want, because then when I pull it into mine, that helps. But if you don't do that, that's not a big deal either. So we're just going to hit create repel. We're going to start by importing our turtle module. So we can just type import turtle. And while we're at it, we could just put comma random, because we're going to use the random module to generate some random numbers and even generate a random choice from a list. And we could do it with a comma like that. Instead of putting two lines, it'll just save a line. So that's all we're doing there. And what I'm going to do is make a color list. So I'm going to call this color list. And I don't know if we've done lists very much yet, but we will do a lot more with lists from here on out. But a list is basically a list of, it could be, anything. It could be strings, it could be other variables, it could be numbers, it could be all kinds of things. We can generate lists, we can add to lists, we can do all kinds of things with lists. We'll do plenty with lists, but at least this will get you familiar with lists. And a list is basically just a variable that's assigned to a bunch of things inside of square brackets. So I'm just going to put square brackets, and I'm going to put a bunch of colors here. So I never know what colors to put. You can look up HTML colors. If you ever look it up and you'll see all kinds of different colors. You could just, just search HTML colors and color names or something like that. And you'll come to a website that'll have all kinds of different HTML color names that you'll see. You'll see lists of them. So they're not just red, green, blue. There's all kinds of names and they don't have to have the capital letters. You could have blue, violet, brown. You could have all these names that you want to use. If you're sick of using the same names and you're like, I really want to use uh, light coral. You could throw in light coral. Sometimes when I'm doing a video, I'll throw in things that are the quickest. So that's what I'll do now. I'll just type in red, green, blue, cyan. I'll use the process colors, yellow, magenta, purple, light coral. How about that? And that's all one word. I'll put in light coral. And let's see if there's any others that I could put in here. Again, it doesn't matter how many I put. I'll put a, you know, a dark green, maybe a deep pink, dark green and deep pink. This is my color list, and it doesn't matter how many I have in here. They just have to be separated by a comma. Now, right now, remember, these are considered variables because they don't have quotes on them. They're not strings. So it wouldn't really know what they are. So to make these strings, it's really easy. With Replit, just double-click and hold your command or your control. If you're on Mac, hold the command key. If you're on Windows, hold the control key, and then double-click double click and just go through and highlight all of these and what we're going to do is put the quotes on all at once that'll make life easier especially when you're typing a lot of stuff 
So I'll highlight all of these by holding the command or control and then just shift quote and you add the quotes. So now they're all strings and that's what we're going to use for our colors. So that's our list and we're going to take random colors from this list. And what I'm going to try to do is just create our function right away and do everything inside the function. So I'm going to call my function draw polygon because basically the function will draw one. So we'll just call it draw polygon. Don't forget your parentheses and your colon. So that's our function definition. And when you hit enter, it'll make it indented already. And we'll just create a turtle. So we'll just do t.turtle. And you could click on some of these hints if they come up here. And, and I'll click on turtle again and then add a capital T here and put my parentheses. That's for the class. So that's instantiating my turtle. And actually, I did this wrong. That should be an equal sign there. So we have to create the instance first, then, but then we use the t dot, t dot syntax after that. So a couple things we could do with t dot turtle. We could give them a speed, t dot speed, and we'll do them really fast at like 10 to start. And then we could even go faster than that. But that way, he'll be really fast when we do this because we'll have all these polygons going. So we're creating the turtle. Now, I'm not giving him a shape because we're actually going to hide him when we're done. Now next, what we typically do is give him a color. Now instead of giving him a color, let's do this. Let's make a random color. I'm just going to use ran in front of everything just to indicate that I'm doing random. So I'm going to do random CLR. And random CLR is going to be random. We're going to use the random module. And then we're going to use the random method, except we're not going to use rand int. We're going to use something called choice. And basically, that just selects a random choice from a list, because we have a list up here. And that's pretty easy. So we're going to do a random dot choice. And the list that we're actually getting stuff from is color list. So does that make sense? We're going to get a random choice from this list. So and it's going to be held as this value. So this rand color is going to be whatever we choose from this list. So we're choosing a random item from this list and it's going to be held as the variable rand color. So rand color is what we're going to use when we make our turtle. So right after this, we could just say t.color. And the color that he's going to use is ran color. That's what he's going to use. So he's going to use the random color that we choose from here. So he's going to choose any one of these from here, if that makes sense. And we're doing it in here. We're doing ran color in here so that every time we run the function, because we are going to run this multiple times, every time we run the function, this will generate a new color. Because if we do this more than once, it'll make a new one each time. So that's the color it's going to be. Now, it's OK that you have the list outside of the function. Where we run into problems is when we define variables inside a function and then try to use that variable in another function. But the fact that this is defined globally outside of the function, we're fine. We can go and pull from that in here. We can communicate outside. But when you create something inside, you can't always communicate it to another function with it. And we'll talk about that's local and global variable issues that we'll talk about later. But right now, this is fine what we're doing. So generating this list out here is fine. It's just a list sitting here. And we're just pulling things from the list with this method the choice method from the random module. So now we got a color. So we got a color. And what else are we going to do? Well, we're going to make a polygon, I guess. That's what's next. And it needs a number of sides. It's going to need a length. So what we're going to do is we're going to say t dot forward. Now forward is its length. Now that means how far he's going to go forward. And we're going to make this random. So let's put ran length, even though that's kind of a long variable name. At least we know what it is. So random length we'll put in there. Now, we don't have it defined yet. So we may have problems if you start to use something that you haven't defined yet. But anyway, we're going to define that. So we're going to use a random length. And then when he turns, we're going to say t dot left. And we're going to use something called angle. Now, it won't be a random angle. And it'll actually be based on the sides. And we haven't defined sides yet. So we're going to have to do that as well. And what we'll do here is we'll say for i in range. And this is going to be the sides. And I'll put a colon here. And I'll put this in here. So I don't know if you could follow this yet, maybe from the last one that we did. But what's going to happen here is we're going to create a shape. Now, if it was a square, let's say it was, let's just do this before I, I do all this. Let's just say if it was a square and it was going to be 100 and its angle was going to be 90, we would make a square with a random color. And if it was a square, it would need to do this four times. It would need to go forward, turn, forward, turn, forward, turn, forward, turn. So it always needs the range is the same number as the sides. So let's say I just put in four here. And that was my draw polygon. And let's just let's just do this just for the hell of it. I'll, I'll just call it. We'll stop here and just kind of call it. And I'll say draw polygon and it comes up here. And let's just see what we got so far. 
And look at that, it's green. Now let's run it again. It's purple, I think. And we'll run it again. And it's kind of an orange color, I think, or something. I'm not, that might be the light coral. So it's doing the random colors. It's not doing any random sides, but it's making a four-sided polygon. Four-sided, because we have a four here. And it's doing a, a hundred each time. And it's turning that angle each time, because that's what it has to be. It has to be 90 degrees if it's four. Because we do something where we take 360, divide it by four, and that's how you get the 90. That's how you get the angle. But we're going to change that. So we're going to come up with some random sides and even the random length. So the length is a little different. So these are going to be random numbers, but that actually works so far. Now, even before we worry about the random, remember that we have to do a begin fill. So we could do t.beginfill. We could get all this other stuff out of the way. We could say begin fill. And after this is done, we could say t.endfill. Now remember, what do we have to do here? You have to remember to get this thing back to the, the same level as this, because we don't want the end fill in the loop. We want it out of the loop. So the only thing in the loop is forward and left. That's what's going to draw our square. And I'll put it, I'll put this and I'll say draw polygon because that's what it does. And it's not just going to be a square. That's why I'm putting polygon. So it's going to draw that depending on how many sides we have. So if it was five sides, just, just for example, if I threw in a five in there, it's not going to draw a shape correctly because, it, well, it goes around an extra time. It's still going 90 degrees. So it just goes around an extra time. But our fill's working. So let's take this out of here for a second. I'll put it back to four. So, so right now what we have is we have our turtle drawing random colored squares. And even at the end, if you don't want to see our turtle there, that's the classic shape. If you don't want to see him at the end, we're going to say t.hideTurtle. Then we don't have to worry about seeing him at the end. Then he'll disappear at the end. Okay, so that's perfect. So we have random colored squares being created at one location. So other random things we have to do and we'll do location last, is we have to make this a random number of sides. So let's do that next. We're going to make a random number of sides, and then we'll make it the random number of length, so they're big and small. So we'll go a random number of sides. So how do we do that? Well, sides is going to be an integer. When you tell it a number of sides, that's going to be an integer, so we're going to have to go back to the rand int. So after the color here, I guess I could do it after here, because we did rand color and we gave it a color. And we'll make a variable called rand sides. And this will be the random number of sides. I'm just trying to be consistent with my names here. All right, so we have rand sides here, and I'm going to say equals, and it's going to be random module dot rand int. I don't think that'll come up. I don't think the method name will come up. And the random integer, so the random number of sides that we're going to be working with, and if you haven't done the random polygons exercise, which we have in, in this class, maybe in the other one, if you need a random number of sides, for polygons, we're just going to use between 3 and 10. We're either going to make a triangle all the way up to a decagon. And if you just wanted to go up to an octagon, that's fine. But we'll go up 3 to 10. We'll make that as a random polygon. So we wouldn't make a polygon that's two sides. But we'll make 3 and then 10. So it'll be inclusive of 10. And if you wanted to do less and have shapes that have you know less sides, that's fine. And if you keep going more than 10, they start to look like circles anyway. So, so those are our random sides between 3 to 10. And now what you can do is go in here and say ran sides. So you can give them a random number of sides. And if you did that, he could either have three sides between 10 sides. Let's run it and just see what happens. There's one. Now it's making a square each time. And I don't even see what's happening here. It's making a random number of sides. Why is it not changing? The reason it's not changing is because it's only using 90 degrees. So it's always turning 90 degrees. We want to match up its angle with how many sides it's doing. So what we have to do before we even get to this point is we're going to make another variable. And we're going to say angle. We'll just use a variable called angle. Now, I, I talked about using it here, but we're going to replace it in here. We're going to say the angle. Now, it doesn't have to be a random angle. The angle just has to be based on the rand sides. So it's just an angle. So it's not really random. We're not picking a random angle. So we're going to say angle equals 360. And this is always the same. We're going to take 360 degrees and divide that by rand sides. So whatever sides we come up with. So if there's three sides, it's going to say 360 divided by rand sides. And it's going to come up with 120. And if it's 360 divided by 5, it's going to come up with 72. And now, in order to do that math, we have to put angle in here. We have to replace this with angle, not angel. It has to be angle. So there's angle. So that means 
whatever number of sides we get, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, it's going to take 360 divided by that. So if it takes 360 divided by 10, the angle will be 36, and it'll do that 10 times with a 36 degree angle, and it'll always work out to be a closed polygon. So watch what happens now after doing that. Now this is pretty big. This is a seven-sided, that's a septagon. And I'll run it again. So that's the decagon. When they're even numbered, they're usually flat on the top and bottom. Let's run this one, see what it is. That's a hexagon. See, it's even, it's flat on the top and bottom. And there's a triangle, that's odd because it's only flat on the bottom. And that's a hexagon. Okay, so we got it here. And even though the sizes look like they're changing, they're using the same length here. So they're not really random sizes. They just appear like they're different sizes, but their sides are always the same. So we're going to randomize that a little bit. Um, I don't know how much we'll do it, but may maybe somewhere between half of that and up to there. So between whatever, if we're using 100, see this is the last number we want to change here. So we want to make a random number that's going to be ran length or something. So that's one more we'll do here. We'll do ran length. I'll put it in here and I'll say ran length equals. Now what's the ran length going to be? Well, we'll use the random module. It's going to be a number, so we're going to use rand int. Make sure you have the D in there. So it's going to be rand int, and it's coming up now because I think because I, I already used it. And then in my parentheses, it could be random from, now you don't want to make it like zero, but maybe you want to make it between 20 or something, you know, really small between 20 and 100. Maybe you don't want them any bigger than this. So between 20 and 100. Now, the, the only thing that I do different sometimes, and we'll try it out, is because 20 through 100 gives random numbers, and you could have 20, 21, 22, 23, all those numbers, and sometimes the difference is so slight that you don't even notice it. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll, I'll go from 2 to 10 and then multiply that by 10 so that it goes in increments of 10 if that makes any sense. So that it'll only do 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 instead of every number in between. And again, we'll try it out first, but it'll just be a matter of changing this to 2, changing that to 10, and putting a multiply 10 afterwards. We still have to use the rand length. So the rand length is going to be down here. So we're going to do ran length, and let's see what happens here. All right, there's one that's red, random color, random number of sides. It's nine sides, and there's a bigger one, bigger one. Now, the, the size is, there's a little one, so we're seeing a little variation, but I think we're going to see more variation with having less choices between 20 and that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that between 2 and 10, and then multiply this by 10. I think I was saying 100, but by 10. So that would be from 20, and then it would only do 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100. So there'll be a little more range when you do that. You'll see a little bit. Now, based on the shape they create, they could appear bigger because the more sides they have, usually the bigger they have. So you can see they're getting pretty big there, and some are smaller. So we got the random sides, we got the random color, we got the random length that we're using on there. We call that random length rather than size because sometimes it's hard to when I say them together, side and sides, people get confused. So we have that. So all we have to do is change its go to so they start in different places. And then once they start in different places, we're just going to run this thing through a loop and then just let it go as many times as we want in a loop. You can make it go 30 times, 20 times, whatever you want. But since there's a little more math involved here and I'm throwing a bunch of numbers at you, let's take a break here and then for part two of this, of the polygons everywhere, we'll finish it up. So part one was basically just doing random color, random length, random number of sides, and I think that's it. Rand color, random number of sides, and random length. The angle is created from the random number of sides, so they always match up so that it's making uh, a polygon shape. So it's making a triangle through a decagon. And we don't have a go-to yet, so we're going to have to add a go-to so they start at different places in the next part. So I'll see you in part two of Polygons Everywhere.